And so um, uh, I'm going to welcome Tomash to the stage and uh, let's talk about uh, Wasm and Nats. Hello, uh, my name is Tomash, as Rem introduced me. So let's go uh, through the proof of concept of uh, what Wasm is and what, how we can leverage it. So what's important is, I, I think to, I, I would like to reiterate, reiterate it that Nats is a very flexible system and you can do a lot of things out of the box and even more if you set the proper configuration. And even if there's something not there, uh, you can you can always contribute and we'll have the contributions on both server and the clients. But but sometimes you need something more. And if that's something that you cannot get into the upstream because it's something very custom for you, it's uh, it's a bummer because you have to do something to extend that server uh, for your custom things. You, you might add a service that we that that uh, Jeremy and Byron uh, uh, talked about. Some other service uh, that will do the additional work you need. Uh, in some cases, you might uh, just wrap the NAT server uh, binary with some some code, or add, you, you can you can fork the server. But usually, that's something you want to avoid. So the question is how we could extend NATs. With, without compromising its simplicity of the setup and deployment. And what I think that was can be a solution. It's, it's just a proof of concept for now. So uh, I would not expect it soon uh, in a new release, but it's something that we are experimenting with. And what is nice about it, that it does not make your server more complex, not server more complex, because uh, we, we've lost when not server is a host uh, running as it is running without CGO, with using the Vazero runtime, uh, you could just add a guest a module that will be run uh, at the place we'll define what it can run. Uh, it will not impact, the, it's a very custom feature for you, for your use case. It will not affect the performance because it will be, it can, it can affect the performance, but only when you choose to load that module and use it in your hot path. Mm, it will not affect others. It will not increase the complexity of the server or add any edge cases. You basically can add whatever logic you want there, whatever you need, and it should be fine. Uh, so that brings a lot, right? A lot of features that we would like to have. Some of you, some of us would like to have, but would not, would, are not mainstream enough to have them in the server or are having an impact on performance. So. Let's see uh, what we can do. I hope you can see my terminal right now. I defined a very simple interface right now. This is a hot path in the publish. So every message that is published uh, will go through this. And when we can start, I, I was struggling a little with what we could do actually, what, how, what I would be able to show you so it's a, something nice. And uh, the previous demos give me an, a perfect example with the full full. That dot showed how to how to debug it, but what if we didn't need to debug it? What if we could just solve it? So this API, uh, this is a guest function that you have to write. This is a Rust example to show you. Yeah, I'm a Rust maintainer too, the client, but this allows you to to to, to show you that the guest can be in whatever language you like to. So that as long as it supports uh, WebAssembly, and there was the interface. So the host is the NAT server. And then we tell the host where the WebAssembly module is. It will load it, and it will call this function that is defined here. So, so there was the example with Fufu being uppercase. So we could do, for starters, say that if uh, message subject, uh, let's make it a reference. It's not relevant. Uh, to lowercase is not the same as message subject. Uh, then what we'll do, as you can see, it returns a result and an option. So we'll say that it does not return a proper uh, thing. It will say subject can be only lowercase. Yeah, and that's what, uh, let's make it, what we'll do. And here we can just say, okay, some, otherwise we'll just pass the message further. 
let's subscribe to the uh, with the CLI to not sub events and let's publish to events something whatever as you can see it's properly properly published but what happened now is as you can see this is a callback uh, from the connection to the nuts we actually get an error saying what exactly would we specified in in here that the events can only be lowercase and now the user will not be able to publish uppercase if we decided to do so. And it's all happening for all messages in the hot path. But maybe we just don't want to send the, the user the error. Maybe we want to do something else. Maybe we want to fix it to, for the user. So let's try it. Uh, maybe uh, we can do it much simpler. We'll instead of uh, doing what we did, we'll just return the message struct and we'll say that the message, uh, sorry, the subject is subject, so no, it's message subject to lowercase and just be fine with the rest of it. Okay, mm. let's recompile the module. Uh, I just re reloaded the server. The, the hot the hot reload should work, but it doesn't because of, I had some problems with memory allocation. This is just a uh, POC. And right now, if we'll publish the message properly uh, to the lowered case, it will work. But what will happen now? Ah, as you can see, it doesn't matter what, what the case is then. Because what we just did, it, we just lower case it. And all that is, again, happening on the hot path. One last thing we could do with this, well, let's delete it. And let's say that if, I don't know, message subject, or let's do something with a payload, mm, or no, we can do something uh, something else. Mm, let's do something with the with the payload. Mm, let's, let's lowercase the whole the payload uh, contents. So uh, message payload is a reference, and then we'll do some operations. First, we need to convert it quickly to, to back to string. Then now we have access to the string, not to the bytes. Uh, now we'll do the actual lowercase, and now we will do back again to bytes yeah this is typical rust thingy so no worries about it and we'll return okay so no error will be uh, notified to the user to the callback we'll send some so we'll not filter it out uh, as we did previously and we'll just return the message uh, with all the fields as they were exactly expect the payload, which would be this one that we specified. And the rest, this is just a shortcut to all the fields from the original message will be passed. Oh yeah, typo. Oh, where is the typo? Okay, are here. <laughs> okay, now it's fine. Uh, let's recompile the module. And uh, now what happens, I deleted uh, the lower casing. Something as a payload works fine. But now, as you see, we also normalize the payload. So basically, we can do whatever you want with the message that was passed in. We can filter it out. Uh, we can change, we can validate it. Uh, we can, we, we could possibly validate the schema if we wanted. We could remove something from the message like sensitive data if we found it, or we could uh, remap the subjects, but we could do it already in nuts. And you could mm, change the reply, basically you have access to the whole message. We could do also a fan out, but I just didn't add the option here uh, to, to, to uh, fan out the message to the other subjects. And yeah, it's, I think it's, quite powerful. Uh, it, me, it needs a lot of more work on the server side, 
And the good thing is that actually calling the guest from host using the zero runtime inside the NAT server is only two microseconds uh, overhead. So uh, not that big. I don't count anything that ha is happening inside. Uh, yeah, and that's it for the um, uh, for the proof of concept for WebAssembly in a hot path. This is Thank awesome. You. And so uh, we had a couple of questions just around this, uh, you know, that this is currently a proof of concept. It's not in the server today, but kind of what I was speaking to earlier with, with some things around um, little use cases like schema validation and all the nuance around that um, is that, you know, we, we'd love to continue to experiment and, and you know, watch the the um, watch how WASM is continuing to evolve and, and on multiple fronts and multiple languages and things like that to be able to, you know, provide stuff like this where you, we already have a kind of runtime out of the box for running these really quick um, kind of in between uh, the server and the requester and responder. Um, and so it, it's really cool to see this and, and hopefully we'll see more of this and, and more kind of like little micro extensions to, to the NAT servers. This is, this is really neat. Thanks so much, Tomash, for, for being able to share that. All right. Thank so you. I know we're, uh, we're a little bit over time, but that's totally okay. 